God bless you, body of Christ. It's an awesome pleasure to have you join us today. I'm Brian Thompson, pastor of the Simon Temple Amy Zion Church. For those who are members and those who are not members or virtual members and those who are just do drop in, we thank God for you being with us on this Bible study today. This is the day that the Lord hath made. We shall continue to rejoice and be glad in it. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this awesome day. We thank you for this day we've never seen before, never shall see again, but we're going to take full opportunity while we're in this day. We're going to rejoice again, as I say, I'm going to always rejoice, pray without ceasing, and going to be able to give God thanks, for this is the will of God concerning our lives. So, Lord, I pray that you would touch everyone under the sound of my voice, that you will continue to impart your Holy Spirit. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We thank God for, for being here today, and we ask God to continue uh, to bless your life as we continue to do the awesome works of Jesus Christ. At this time, we're going to do something real special. I just want us to stop and pray. We're going to do a one-and-a-half-minute prayer for this world, for this nation, and all that's going on in the world. And we're just going to do this as a silent prayer. Uh, I, I want to do this right now, and, and as we do this, uh, I'm just going to ask everybody under the sound of my voice to start praying. Let's pray. In Jesus' name, amen. There's a lot going on. There's a lot of confusion, a lot of turmoil, a lot of infighting, a lot of uh, race baiting, a lot of things going on. But let me tell you, God is still faithful. We're going to go forth uh, this morning, with our, this, this day with our Bible study, and we're going to uh, deal with carnality uh, versus uh, heavenly-minded Christians. As we deal with this, we're going to, um, use it as a title, Destination Heaven, an Enjoyable Trip or a Rough Ride. Destination Heaven, an Enjoyable Trip or a Rough Ride. But that's our destination. Our destination is through uh, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to be able to get to where God would have us to be. And that is living in the kingdom here on earth, but also our destination is to be in heaven. With that, I'll start out with a story of, of someone who is on a plane, and I experienced this actually myself a long time ago as I first started flying. As I was flying, um, and, and this is a story illustration that was a part of this study, but also something that I can be able to share. I remember years ago when I started flying, I got on the plane, I was nervous, did not know exactly what to do. And I remember that this was at the time where flight attendants served uh, food serve full meals, and some of y'all don't, you know, you, you, you did pretzels and peanuts and some water and, and, and a Coke. They used to serve full meals on the way to our destination. And I remember uh, I first started flying. I was green, you know, wet behind the ears. I didn't know. And they came by and said, would you like this meal or that meal? Well, I didn't have a lot of money, so I didn't know how much it was. So I said, no, I'm fine. I'm no problem. They asked me, did I want a Coke or did I want something to drink? I said, no, I'm fine. It's okay. And other people were getting the meals and stuff, and I said, well, I'm going to be like them one day. I'm going to be able to buy me some food. I'm going to be able to get me some food while I'm on the plane. And, and I remember I was hungry, and I was sitting there, and I said, man, I should have bought me a ham sandwich or some chicken or something, but I didn't bring anything because I wasn't prepared. And I remember when we got ready to land, uh, you, know, you know, 30, 40 minutes before we got ready to land, 
the, the flight attendant came through and said, would you need anything else? Would you like anything else? I said, no, uh, I didn't get anything. She said, well, you know, anybody who wants to have anything can, can just have it. I said, what do you mean just have it? She said, well, the, the food is free. And I, I had no idea the food was free. Nobody told me. She said, yeah, that's included within your ticket. And I was like, wow. And I felt so stupid because I didn't know. And the worst of all, I didn't ask. And I found out. But from then on, I made sure I took advantage of every accoutrement or anything that they were able to give because I found out that that was a part of the ride. That was part of the ticket. I rode all that way smelling other people's food, watching other people get satisfied, me hungry. And I stayed hungry, all because I didn't take the opportunity to take what was offered to me. That's a lot the way that we go through life and our destination on the way to heaven, that God gives us a lot of stuff, and he gives us the opportunity to be able to live life and have it more abundantly. But because we don't realize what's included in the ride or what's included in the ticket, we arrive at our destination. We're going to get to our destination, but the problem is some people are going to arrive full and some are going to arrive hungry. We're going to deal with this today. I pray that, that, that you're ready for this as we deal with this awesome, awesome uh, Bible study. Now, you've got to understand something that John 10 and 10, and this is our first scripture in John uh, 10, verse 10. It says, the thief cometh not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I am come that you might have life and that you may have it full or have it more abundantly, as the King James would say. NIV is that you're full. It means you have an abundance of it. That's what he came. I've come that you might have life, that you might have life and have it more abundantly. But we also understand that the thief cometh not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I am come that you might have life and have it full. God has designed through uh, the efficacious blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that we might be able to have the right to eternal life. Now, we can arrive at the destination of uh, being hungry, being uh, in lack, being depleted, being uh, wounded, being to the point where uh, we're in need. Sometimes it's a choice on how we go through this thing. When I say sometimes, time and chance happen to all men. We understand that through the word of God. But some things we don't take advantage of as, as kingdom dwellers in a kingdom principle. So what we do is we get to our destination, we get to our end result. But life didn't have to be as hard as we made it to be. I truly believe a lot of folks love misery. A lot of folks love misery. They love despair. They love to walk around with sackcloth and ashes and act like that they've been through, and sometimes the sufferings that we go through is not to uh, the effect that God wants us to go through. Yes, uh, the Bible tells us in the fruits of the Spirit there's going to be long-suffering. That is, that is true, but it should not be all the time because just like as I was able to arrive at my destination uh, wherever I was flying, I did not have to be that hungry. I did not have to be that hungry, and I was hungry. And understand this, the person beside me in a seat right beside me, going to the same destination. They were full because they took advantage of what was offered to them. I want to ask you today, on your way to heaven, are you taking advantage of what God is offering to you? Or are you deciding to stay in lack all because you are misinformed and you're dealing with a carnal nature? So we're going to deal with things. First of all, we're going to deal with the carnal Christian. We're going to deal with the carnal Christian because there's a carnal Christian and there's a spiritual Christian. We're going to deal with both of them. But first we deal with the carnal. Uh, first of all, carnal Christian. Uh, first of all, you can put on your Bible study letter A under number one. Carnal Christian is number one. Letter A. A person who belongs to Christ but doesn't live like it. A carnal Christian is somebody who, who a person, a Christian, uh, 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 who belongs to Christ but does not live like it. First Corinthians 3 and 1. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 3, verse 1, and that's where we're going to find that first uh, uh, scripture here. Brothers and sisters, I could not address you as people who live by the Spirit, but as people who are still worldly, mere infants in Christ. So I could not give you meat. I had to give you milk because you're still infants. You cannot take the wholeness of what I have. So that's somebody who is a person who belongs to Christ but does not live like it. There is a, there's, there's a way, and, and, and please don't think just because you're saved and you're going to heaven, that's all it is to it. 
there's an abundance and there's things that God wants to give to you. And when he's come that you might have life and have it more abundantly, life is good. It's a wonderful thing, but I need the abundance of life, the fullness of joy. So that's what God is able to do. So as we deal with this, uh, uh, brothers in Christ, uh, you can be a brother in Christ and still have a, a carnal mind and have a, 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 a worldly view, but have a zeal of God, having uh, uh, given your life to Christ, but still living in a carnal minded way. Now, carnal minded or carnal carnality is enmity against God. So you're fighting against the thing that God would have you to be. Didn't say you won't save. I don't have the power <coughs> or the authority to be able to, to govern whether you're saved or not. But I will tell you that there's people in Christ who are still living. Uh, they belong to Christ, but they don't act like it. So they're not walking in it. Don't mean that they're walking around just willfully sinning every day, trying to do things that are, are, are diametrically opposed to God, but they will not adhere to the things of God. So what they're doing is adhering to the things of the flesh, the carnal nature, rather than the things of the true and living God. There's an accountability that goes along with that, and it deals with relationship. Letter B is they are, grow they are not growing spiritually. So they are spiritual, but they are not growing spiritually. They are spiritual, but not growing spiritually. 1 Corinthians 3, 2 through 3 tells us this. 1 Corinthians 3, 2 through 3 will tell us this. It says, I gave you milk, not solid food, for you were not ready for it. Indeed, you are still not ready. You are still worldly. For since there is jealousy quarreling among you, are you not worldly? Are you not acting like mere humans? Now watch verse 3 again. You are still worldly. Now watch what he says now. You have a knowledge of Christ, but you're still worldly because you're still living like the world. But since there is jealousy and quarreling, there cannot be jealousy, quarreling, envy, strife, uh, backbiting in you, and you be a true, uh, uh, let, me, let me say, a regenerated in your mind Christian because you're still acting like the world. There ought to be a change in you. There used to be an old song, I think Tremaine Hawkins uh, sang it. I don't know if Walter Hawkins wrote it. It says, there's a wonderful change that have come over me or a wonderful change that have come in my life. And, and we sing it a lot, change. A lot of people don't make a change. Um, I, we sing a song uh, in our church called, I want to be a Christian in my heart. Um, a lot of people I have that form. They, 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 they're Christians in name and they even have a, a pseudo relationship with Christ. So I'm not going to say they are not saved, but they are not living as a regenerated Christian in the renewing of that mind because they're still doing the same things, the quarreling, the reveling. So uh, Paul is telling us, the writer is telling us that if you're doing that, you don't have a complete uh, uh, relationship with Christ because you're not living in the full abundance because uh, to live in Christ is peace. So if I've got peace, I shouldn't be quarreling, backbiting, all that foolishness all the time because I'm in Christ Jesus. So it's natural to be milk fed at birth, right? Okay, but uh, unnatural to remain an infant. You should not remain an infant all of your life. If you are in Christ Jesus, there ought to be a growing up period. There ought to be a time of weaning off uh, 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 the milk and being able to go to meat. Anybody who's had a baby understand that the baby has life. So when the baby comes into the world, we hit it on the behind, uh, uh, her on the behind, and, and, and the baby starts to cry, that we let them know they have life. We take it, put it with the mother, the mother starts to feed, whether it be natural or whether it be uh, through bottle, whatever it is, that there's nourishment going into the baby. Once the nourishment is going into the baby, the baby starts to grow and to develop to the point where they don't need that anymore. And then they go to Similac and then they go to Infamil and then they go uh, to Gerber's baby food and then they go to soft food and mashed potatoes and sweet potatoes and applesauce and then they want bologna and then they get all the way to filet mignon. It should be the same way with the natural progression as a Christian. You shouldn't be on milk. We shouldn't be on milk all our life. There's a natural progression where we're no longer on milk. We're on meat, the solid things, the deep things of God. So when we live and we live as a carnal Christian, yes, we have experienced who Christ is. We have received Christ, but we have not let him take total manifestation into our lives. All right. <coughs> See is a carnal Christian, is a disappointment to Christ. A carnal Christian is a disappointment to Christ. It says that you are still worldly 
acting like mere men. That's back to 1 Corinthians uh, 3 and verse 3. That you are worldly, acting like the world, acting like the people that you uh, used to be, not the person that you want to be. Paul was saying that there is still, after many years, uh, folks who are believers trying to live like non-believers. So therefore, there's not a maturity. This reduces the strength of Christ's church because he's called us to be disciples. Why is this important? Pastor, as long as I'm going to heaven, that's all right. You are not fulfilling your mandate to be a disciple, to, to do the great commission, to do the work of Christ because he's not able to grow you. He's not able to use you to, to edify the body of Christ. So when we deal with that, we understand something that a carnal Christian is a, deport, a disappointment to Christ. Uh, Paul was saying that you are still walking as the world. Next letter D, a carnal Christian is not, is not a victorious believer. A carnal Christian is not a victorious believer. In verse 3, for since there is jealousy and quarreling among you, are you not worldly? It means fleshly. You're dealing with the things of flesh. That does not mean you're not going to have disagreements. Everybody who's saved going to have some disagreements. You're going to have some arguments. Um, people often say, well, we, uh, we've been married for 50 years and we ain't never had an argument. Well, of course, you didn't talk to each other for 24 hours. Of course, you won't argue. And that's still an argument. That means there's no communication. Well, it's the same thing as we walking with Christ. As, as you're going to have issues with people, you are going to have issues. But the quarreling, jealousy, envy, strife, backbiting, all that stuff, as you grow, it ought to diminish. It ought to be able to go. Yes, by, by the attacks that come in your life, there are going to be people who are going to push your right buttons. And yes, many of the afflictions are the righteous, but there are some things you ought to graduate from. You should not be fussing and, and feuding with the same people all the time because you're operating in a carnal way. All right. So as we continue to do this, you must understand, and we should be known by the love of unity. So in John 13 and 35, John 13 and 35, I give you a minute to be able to find it. John 13 and 35. John 13 and 35. By this, all men will know that you are disciples if you love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are disciples if you love one another. Take a minute to look at that. Just take a minute to look at that. It says, by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. So love is attached to you showing that you are a disciple of Christ. Love is a, that's an attachment that goes with that. There's an attachment. So brothers and sisters, I want you to understand that there's an attachment, which means he will know that you are his disciples. You will know his disciples by the love that you show. So as we continue, you understand a carnal Christian is not a victorious believer. You can't be victorious because you're still living in carnality. Some symptoms, little or no prayer life, that will show that you're still carnally minded. There's little or no prayer life. You can't be victorious. Prayer is where the church gets her power. You're not going to be able to have power and overcome the, the wiles of the enemy and, uh, and of, 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 of the world because uh, uh, you got to have a prayer life. Not reading the Bible. Faith coming by hearing, hearing by the word of God. It says that we ought to be able to rightly divide the word of truth. That happens continuously. That com comes in a way that you are able to walk with God and talk with God and live uh, with God, which means you have to uh, know this scripture. You have to be with this scripture. You have to learn the word of truth. So that's what you're dealing with. Perha perhaps not worrying about problems rather than trusting in the Lord to solve them. That does not mean there's not going to be worries in your life. But he said, cast your cares upon him for he careth for you. Carnality will make you worry over stuff. And let me tell you, I, I, I do it and I have to be reminded. Oftentimes my wife, I have to remind me who I am. My children will have to remind me who I am and, and, and remind myself through the spirit. The spirit of God will remind me. Uh, great is he that's in you than he that's in the world and remind you that no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. Carnality will cause you to worry about stuff 
that sometimes you don't even really need to be able to deal with. You don't, you don't, you don't need to be able to deal with, but you're dealing with it because of the carnality, all right? Now, there's the carnal Christian and there's a spiritual Christian. This is the spiritual Christian. Seeks to see things from God's point of view. A spiritual Christian seeks to see things from God's point of view. 1 Corinthians 2, 15 through 16. 1 Corinthians uh, 2, 15 through 16. You've got to seek to see things from God's point of view. The person with the spirit makes judgments about all things, but such a person is not subject to merely human judgments. All right? The person with the spirit makes judgments about all things, but such a person is not subject to merely human judgments. All right? Instead of getting uh, bitter towards God when trials come, they take comfort in the fact that God works things for their good. You've got to have that mindset. When in a spiritual Christian, a spiritual Christian sees things as God's going to work it out. And we deal with it all the time in Romans 8, 28. We quote it all the time because I'm a spiritual mind. If some people say you're just too happy or talk to you and as you walk through life and say uh, that you're just too confident. And the Bible tells me to be confident. It tells me to be assured. Uh, it tells me I know the plans I have for you, as he talked to Jeremiah, plans to prosper you and give you inspection. And so Romans 8 and 28 and says, we know that all things work together for good for them that love the Lord, honor the called according to his purpose. And we know that all things work together for good uh, for them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. All right. So letter A is seeks uh, to see things from God's point of view. And, and letter B is servants of Christ. Servants of Christ, servants of Christ. A spiritual Christian is a servant of Christ. That's 1 Corinthians 4 and 1. That's 1 Corinthians 4 and 1. 1 Corinthians 4 and 1. I'll give you a minute to be able to find that. 1 Corinthians 4 and verse 1. I was about to say when you have it, say amen, but uh, you're not here. All right? Praise the Lord. All right? Uh, this then is how you ought to regard us as servants of Christ, as those entrusted with the mysteries God has revealed. This then is how you ought to regard us as servants of Christ and as those entrusted with the mysteries God has revealed. All right. So when we're dealing with this, you understand, brothers and sisters, that's a spiritual Christian, a spiritual Christian having that mind of Christ. So we're being servants of Christ. Those who are in Christ Jesus will have a servitude or a servitude of Christ that I'm going to serve Christ uh, uh, dutifully. I'm going to uh, uh, serve him with all of my heart. All right. All right. Letter C is their character is uh, evidenced by the increasing fruit of the spirit. All right. And we're going to deal with Galatians uh, 5, 22 through 23, because the fruit of the spirit is a lot of things. You know, uh, we like to use it when it's popular. But Galatians 5, 22 through 23. It says, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, and faithfulness. Gentleness, self-control against such things there is no law. Let's go back to verse 22 again. Let's go back to verse 22. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. Verse 23, gentleness, self-control against there is no law. Now, I want you to look at those and see which ones that you are not dis displaying. Look at those and see which those are not manifesting in your life. If you are a child of God and if you are a spiritual Christian, you're going to find out that those things are able to be able to be ever present and manifested in your life. And when they're ever present and manifested in your life, then what you're doing is being pleasing to God. You cannot have love, joy, and peace without having some long suffering. Likewise, you shouldn't have long suffering all the time. There ought to be some joy that is radiating out of your life. There ought to be some peace that is in your life. There ought to be uh, some wonderful things that God is manifesting to the point where you know and realize that God is continuing to, to, to grow your life, but you have to have the ability and the desire to want to be able to grow. If you want to stay carnal, you're not going to operate in those things. So you're not going to exude those things. Those things are not going to manifest um, just by having to live. It, it has to be a walk with God. It's all about relationship. 
And letter D is the spiritual Christian is led by and filled with the Holy Spirit. All right. Listen to that. The spiritual uh, Christian, spiritual Christian is led by and filled with the Holy Spirit. A lot of folks are full of something, but it's not the Holy Spirit. So you've got to understand something that just because you 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 feed the hungry, you help the poor, you uh, help your neighbor, you uh, buy things for people. That don't mean that you're a spiritual Christian. That may just mean you have some great attributes and you're a great humanitarian, but you have not the spirit of God operating in the power. And I'm telling you, I'm not telling you this to be able to get brownie points with God. It's about relationship and being faithful to him. Being faithful to him means I want to live for him. I want to live through him. I want to live by him. That's why when we say in him, we have our moving and our being. So you've got to be a spiritual Christian. We're going to deal with uh, Ephesians 5 and 18. Turn your Bibles to Ephesians 5 and 18. Ephesians 5 and 18. When you have it, uh, I'll be there in a minute. Ephesians 5 and 18. Ephesians 5, 18. It says, do not be drunk with wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. Filled is when someone is under Holy Spirit's control. So to be filled with it is to be filled with the Holy Spirit under the Holy Spirit, Spirit's control. When you don't have that, you are filled with something that is manifesting from the flesh. So as we deal with this, the spiritual Christian is, is led by and filled by the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is not just something that you use when you're on church on Sunday to be able to shout and get in a step and get in the Holy Ghost three step. That is not what the Holy Spirit is only about. It is a convictor. It is something that dwells in you to be able to quicken you, to liven you and get you ready to be able to have an expected end and what God would have you to do. So as a spiritually minded person, I'm filled with the power of the Holy Ghost. I'm filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. Like being under the influence of, of, of anything, there's an influence. And, and I'll use uh, alcohol. Uh, none of y'all out there, you've just seen it on TV. You've never been under the influence of alcohol. But I've heard somebody told me from a credible source that when you're under the influence of, of alcohol, that it inebriates you and you're not under your full capacity. You may, the reason they make you do a sobriety test uh, on, the, on, the, on the road is to see if you're able to touch your nose or even able to walk straight because under the influence of alcohol will make you lose some of your equilibrium and lose some of your senses. The same thing is able or uh, will happen when you are not filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. When you're not filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, then what happens is your flesh, you're operating in a flesh uh, mode. And what it does is allows you not to be able to walk with Christ the way you need to be able to walk with Christ. Uh, uh, likewise, is when you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you govern things by the spirit and not by the flesh. And you walk with God and let God lead and guide you. So when we deal with this, if you're a spiritual Christian, you are led by God and you are filled with the spirit of God. All right. So uh, as we deal with this uh, today, I'm, I'm just telling you that as we deal with uh, uh, Galatians 5, 22 to 23, we've got to understand that we've got to walk in the fruit of the spirit. I would tell you this. And I say this all the time. You've heard me when it's leadership, when it's fellowship, when it's people of God. Look at the whole look at the fruit of the spirit and then look at the people and see if they are operating in a vein that exhibits or exudes the fruits of the spirit. Take the fruits of the spirit. I say that during election. I say that during uh, church. I do say it during life. I say it uh, whether if somebody dealing with somebody in Walmart, or whatever. Look at the fruit of the spirit. Look at the fruits of the spirit and see that though they exhibit those things. See if they exhibit what we're talking about. And if they don't exhibit those things, then those things are not, those person is not operating in uh, the vein that God wants us to do to be led about the Holy Spirit. But likewise, before you look at somebody else, you got to look at yourself. You got to look at yourself and say, you know what? Am I being governed by uh, my flesh or am I being governed by the spirit of God? And those things are at war. I'm telling you, there's a war with your flesh every day. Every minute, every hour, some are doing that right now, your, your attention span to get away from the word, because we do it a lot of times when things are not pleasurable to us, when things uh, do not look the way we want them to look, when things are not 
magnified the way we want them to be, then we try to take stuff in our own hands instead of trusting the true and living God. You've got to be able to trust God, but you've got to have a relationship. Um, the Bible says, forbid not the assembling of the saints. I can't wait for us to be able to get back together. But you not coming to church should not stop you from being a Christian. If you are only, a, say you are a Christian, but when you're coming to church, but because we've been out of church for the last eight months, then you say, well, I'm just not able to, to live as a Christian. That is about relationship. They ain't got nothing to do with the building. The building does not make you have a relationship with God. So the Bible tells many on that day, I will say, Lord, Lord, have I not cast out devils in thy name and did many wonderful things? He says, I never knew you. Depart from me, you worker of iniquity. Understand this. The building don't, does not make you have a relationship. It's about your walk with God. It's about your walk with Jesus Christ. So you've got to understand you can live a carnally minded Christian or you can be as a spiritual minded. But let me tell you something. If you don't grow in Christ, if you don't have a, a, a sense and a sensibility and the spirit of God is not convicting you, and even if you don't do everything right, but you, but, but, but you don't feel the spirit and you're not operating and trying to be able to do better, I often wonder, for you and for I, if you're acting like that, if I'm acting like that, have I ever really, really submitted myself to the Lord Jesus Christ through salvation? Because a lot of times people have a form of godliness, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to do something here. I'm going to uh, go to Romans. Uh, let me go to Romans. Um, Romans 10. I'm going to go to Romans 10. And as we deal with Romans 10, I want to read something to you. And I'm going to deal with verse 1. I'm going to start with verse 1, and I'm going to read this. <coughs> Excuse me. Brothers and sisters, my heart desire and prayer uh, to God is that Israel might be saved. Now, this is what he's saying for the whole nation. That's what he's saying for all of the people. This is the descendants of Israel. This is Israel. Verse 2 says this. Watch what verse 2 says. For I can testify about them that they are zealous for God. But their zeal is not based on knowledge. I bear them record they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge, which is the true knowledge of Jesus Christ. Verse 3 says this. Since they did not know the righteousness of God and sought to establish their own, they did not submit to God's righteousness or the will of God to be in right standing with God. Verse 4 says this. Christ is the culmination of the law so that there may be righteousness for everyone who believes. Verse 5, and it says this, Moses writes, this is about the righteousness that is by the law. The person who does these things will live by them. And it tells us in verse 6 that, it, but the righteousness that is by faith says, do not say in your own heart who will ascend into heaven. That is to bring Christ down. And verse 7 uh, continues, of all will descend into the deep, that is to bring Christ from the dead. Verse 8 tells us, but what does it say? The word is near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart. That is the message concerning faith that we proclaim. Verse 9 goes on to say, if you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, ye shall be saved. And it tells us, for it is with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. And it's with the mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. Verse 11 says, and the scripture says, anyone who believes in him will never be put to shame. And it tells us in verse 12, for there is no difference between the Jew and the Gentile. The same Lord is richly blessing all who call upon him. And 13 tells us this. For everyone, this is the final scripture, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. There is a process. So the process starts uh, uh, and, and, and is concluded through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And when you call on him, you confess your mouth, the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that Jesus Christ has been raised from the dead. Then thou art saved. Thou art saved. So, brothers and sisters, I implore you, I ask you, I beg of you, I pray for you that you and I will live for Christ and be spir a spiritual Christian rather than a carnal Christian. Now, I know there's a great debate theologically about people saying there's no way that you can have a carnal, uh, a carnal thought or a carnal action and really be saved. 
The Bible tells us over and over again, those persons who had relationship with him, and we've dealt with it in Ephesians, we've dealt with it in 1 Corinthians, we've dealt with it in our reading today, that some people will have a relationship with Christ, but be carnally minded, which means they, 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 they need to repent. And, and when they repent, coming to the knowledge of Christ and, and be able to be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And then Christ says, you already saved. If, if you really received him into your life, you're saved, but you've got to be able to deal with a spiritual walk, a spiritual life, a spiritual mindset. And the spiritual mindset exudes or you will have the attributes of Galatians, which tells us about 5, 22 and 23 of the fruits of the spirit. Don't mean that everything is going to always work out uh, the way you want it. But Romans 8 and 28 say that it will always work together for your good. God bless you, our body of Christ. Destination is heaven, but it does matter how you get there. It all matters how you get there. I, I can get from here down to Fayetteville Airport. Uh, by going down Bragg Boulevard and then making a right on Eastern Boulevard and then getting on Aviation Parkway. I can get there. Now, I can walk or I can ride. I'm telling you, either way, I'm going to get there. It's going to take me a longer to get there if I walk, and it's not going to be as comfortable. But if I get in the car and I know my, where I'm going to my destination, it'll be a smoother ride. Not going to say it's going to always be easy. going to be some stoplights. There may be some obstructions. There may be some traffic. I might have to stop for gas, uh, whatever. Those things might happen, but I need to be able to, to walk in the fullness of God and the spirit of God that I'll reach my destination the way God would intend for me to be. Love, grace, and peace be unto you, brothers and sisters. If there's anyone out there that's not saved, who wants to get saved, you can get saved right now. Uh, all you got to do is Romans 10, 9, and 10 that we just talked about. Confess your mouth, the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that Jesus Christ has been raised from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. Just repent of your sins and he will come into your life. If you did that, we believe that you prayed that prayer and God was able. God is able. God already received you. If you came with a repentant a heart and a confession that he is Lord, he has saved your soul. Call us and we'll be more than glad to be able to pray with you. Also, if you don't have a church home, we'd love to have you at Simon Temple. We have I mean, hundreds of of virtual members and would love to have you as one also. Just call us and we'd be more than glad to be able to, de uh, to, to talk with you and to pray with you. 855-979-9804. 855-979-9804. God bless you, body of Christ. It's been wonderful being with you today. Grace and peace be unto you and your family and through the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember that God is forever present and he's continuing to do great things in your life. Don't you ever, don't you ever uh, forget or ever think that God has forgotten about you. He loves you. And during this holiday season, don't worry about what you don't have. Don't worry about who, who's depending on you to buy him a gift. Don't worry about who's saying what. You trust God. Just trust God. I have to say that to myself. You say that to yourself. And, 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 and if you weren't about the gift, you got a gift of everlasting life. And you've got natural life. That's something to give God glory about. And you have opportunity, as we talk about in 1 John 3, 17. Uh, he who has the world's good and seeth his brother in need and shuts up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in you? You have the wonderful opportunity to bless and, and be a blessing to somebody else. So God bless you, body of Christ. We love you. We'll continue to receive our food uh, and toys and everything else that we may be able to bless over a thousand families during Christmas. We need for you to drop it by Simon Temple. We need bikes. We need hats. We need coats. We need gloves. We need uh, toys. Drop them by. We'll wrap them. Just bring them new in, in the package. We'll wrap them and get them out to our destinations. Our, our, uh, our outreach of giving will be the 19th of December in three locations in Fayetteville, North Carolina. We're going to be giving away enough food for a family, each family to have for a week. And then we're going to make sure as much as we can to get toys and gift cards for all of the kids. God bless you. Have a great day.